I find speedrunning incredibly interesting, and there are many reasons why, but the main reason is probably the glitches. There is something so fascinating about witnessing a game getting turned upside down for the sake of speed, and seeing how the focus shifts from the intended gameplay into something completely different. Each game has their own unique glitches, so you essentially never know what kind of abnormalities you might stumble upon. In my 5 years as a speedrunner and glitch hunter, I have found a few game-breaking glitches in various obscure games. Normally, the process of finding these glitches is relatively slow and a skip or a glitch is only found every few weeks or months. When I and a few others started glitch hunting Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine for the N64, something extraordinary happened. In a span of a few months, I witnessed the game virtually crumble apart before me, something I had never seen before. In the beginning of 2021, before this glitch hunting revolution of Indiana Jones, an optimized any% percent speedrun would have been just under 4 hours long. However, nowadays, the record is around 70 minutes. In this video, I want to show you the glitches we found and some examples of just how incredibly broken this game is. I generally won't be going into detail on who discovered the glitches individually, but the biggest contributor to breaking the game is Blue Screen 18 followed by myself. The Kovic and Nathan is bored also played a role in finding and researching these glitches. The first impactful glitch we found was the crawl glitch. In 2015, a YouTube channel called Shrekslot uploaded a video to YouTube showing that when Indy crawled into a certain rock from a particular angle, he would enter a glitched state. In this state, Indy looks sort of like a car or a boat and floats along the ground while stuck in a crawling animation. The video showed the glitch as an interesting visual glitch that tends to softlock the game. But when we looked at this and tried it out, we soon discovered that there was a lot more to this glitch. Crawl glitch is attained by falling or sliding off ledges during a crawl. This is normally not supposed to be possible, but certain slopes or surfaces will allow Indy to fall during the crawl. We don't really know the technical specifics about why this works, but we believe it has something to do with Indy's falling or sliding animation getting mixed up with the crawling animation. When Indy is in the crawl glitch state, his movement options seem very limited at first. If you try to jump, you might softlock, and it is impossible to use any equipment or interact with buttons or such. However, if you use the jump button correctly, it can have some extraordinary results. If Indy is on a slope and you press the jump button, Indy gets latched onto the slope and the collision for that particular slope or polygon seemingly extends endlessly in all directions. Indy can therefore essentially fly along the axis of the slope however far he wants. When you want the flight to end, all you have to do is press the jump button again. To summarize, the crawl glitch state essentially has two sub-states. Normal crawl glitch state, where Indy is not latched onto a polygon. Or flying state, where Indy has latched onto a polygon and can therefore fly around. The jump button is used to go from one of these states to the other. With this, you can start a crawl glitch flight to get to one location, then get out of crawl glitch flying and find a new slope to latch onto to get to the next location. So you can basically string together many crawl glitch flights to get to your various unintended locations. However, there are some limitations or rules to this flying that you have to know if you want to use this glitch. 
Firstly, when you press the jump button to get out of the flying state, you have to make sure that Indy has gained or lost height from his initial jump button press. That is, that Indy's height coordinates are not the same as when you started the flight. For this reason, it's often impossible to get out of the flight if you started the flight on level ground. If you are locked onto a polygon which is level, as in not a slope, there is seemingly no way to gain or lose height. There are however ways to nudge Indy to a different height by grinding along a slanted wall or bumping into objects that will allow you to escape the level flight. Another important rule is that Indy needs to be moving when he presses the first A to start the flight, or else he will softlock. Also, when pressing A the second time to get rid of the flying state, Indy must also be far enough off the ground that he can fall or slide shortly before landing, meaning you cannot get rid of the flight while on the ground. Indy will also softlock if he enters cutscene triggers while in the flying state, but he can enter cutscenes if he is in non-flying normal crawl glitch state. And then finally, to get rid of the crawl glitch state, you can do one of three things. You can die and reload. You can save and reload to load back in at the last checkpoint or crouch next to a collectible item, which for some mysterious reason allows you to end the crawl glitch state. The level Palawan Temple is a prime example of the power of the crawl glitch, since it is played completely from start to finish with the crawl glitch state active. During the start of the opening cutscene of the level, you have one frame where you can actually perform one input for Indy. If you hold the crawl button during this frame, Indy will actually start crawling in the beginning of the cutscene, and he will keep crawling for the rest of the cutscene. Although Indy looks like he's walking, the game interprets him as crawling. Now, the great thing about this cutscene is that in the middle of it, Indy will jump off a ledge. This will make it so Indy is falling during a crawl, and therefore initiate the crawl glitch. From there, we chain together six crawl glitch flights to finish the level. First flight is to get past the lava pit, but since we activated the flight on level ground, we need to mash up against this slope to change Indy's height coordinates before ending the flight. We then proceed to activate a cutscene while we are in normal crawl glitch state, because we would softlock if we try to fly through it later. We then go to our second flight to reach the top of this fallen pillar. On it there is a small slope we use to start our third flight and proceed to fly to the next room. And now that the cutscene has already been activated we can fly through. Then we fly to this platform and land there to start our fourth flight. This slope allows us to get up here where we start our fifth flight which we can finally use to reach the top of the level and get out of bounds. Once Indy goes out of bounds, we can fly to the last section of the level, where we need one more slope to start our sixth flight to reach the trigger for the end of the level. This level takes around 15 minutes to finish without glitches, but can be finished in around 2 minutes and 30 seconds using this method. Although the crawl glitch is a pretty broken mechanic, we can actually break it even further by doing something called a hang unload. So after activating the crawl glitch, you can then fly to a spot where if you release the flight, Indy grabs onto a ledge. After grabbing onto the ledge, you let go of it and the act of letting go of the ledge triggers the hang unload. Now this glitch makes things even more broken and stranger. First interesting aspect of this is that Indy can now use some items during the crawl glitch state, which normally isn't possible. But the most important thing that happens is that walls sort of just lose all of their collision. But luckily for us, the floor still keeps its collision, 
So now, since we are still in the crawl glitch state, we can simply start flying and fly through walls to get out of bounds virtually anywhere we want. This glitch is used once in the any% speedrun in Teotihuacan. By getting crawl glitch on a block in the bottom part of the level, we can then use one of the slopes nearby to fly up against this pillar. And when we end the flight, Indy will grab the latch and be hanging. We then let go of the latch to perform the hang unload, and after that we start flying once more. But since the walls are just suggestions now, we can fly through the final door in the level, skipping 90% of the level. This level takes around 12 minutes to finish glitchless, but with this glitch we can finish it in around 90 seconds. Hovering is a simple but slow technique to gain height next to almost any wall in the game. In order to hover, all you have to do is crawl next to a wall and get Indy to clip slightly into it. This can be done by approaching the wall from an acute angle. After clipping slightly through the wall, you can mash the R button, which is the button you normally hold to crouch or crawl. And by mashing R, Indy will gain a little bit of height with each R press. And therefore you can hover upwards. This was originally used in the level Atherium to skip the second half of the last boss fight in the game. After picking up the blue gem and opening the door, there will normally be a barrier that only opens after finishing the final boss. However, we can crawl, wedge into the wall and hover upwards until Inti starts clipping into the sloping part of the barrier. Once he has hovered enough up, we can stand up and Indy will clip through. This trick is not the fastest way to finish the level nowadays, but it is likely to be used in the All Treasures run in the future. All Treasures is essentially Indy's 100% category. I want to add that there is also another way to hover called an auto hover. This can be achieved by crawling into water. When you crawl into water, Indy will start hovering. The unique thing about the auto hover, however, is that you don't have to mash R, but instead, as long as you just hold R, Indy will automatically gain height on his own. This hover can be used slightly in all treasures in the level Palawan Lagoon. In a trick to enter a grotto earlier than intended, we crawl into the ocean to start an auto hover, which makes us start hovering towards the cliff. We can then stand up and, well, yeah, this happens. So I guess it's time to start talking about the next glitch. So, I started this video by covering the amazing benefits of the crawl glitch flying, and at one point almost every level in the game used the crawl glitch flying to some extent. But then we discovered launching, and slowly but surely launching started taking over more and more of the speedrun. So what is launching? Well. There are ways to make Indy gain incredible amounts of speed in an incredibly short amount of time, and this allows us to fling or launch Indy across whole levels. There are a few ways to achieve this, and the first is what we just witnessed earlier, called a slope launch. The way they work is that first you have to get Indy to a slanted position while crawling. If you then hover, he will not hover straight up, but instead he will hover diagonally towards the upper area of the slope. If you then hover towards a wall, Indy will seem to clip through the wall slightly with his head. Then, if you stand up while facing up against the wall, Indy will for some reason gain insane amounts of speed very quickly and launch forward. These launches can be very finicky to control and if Indy gains too much speed while up against the wall, he will swiftly launch to his own death. 
This kind of launch is used in the old treasures in the level Babylon. In the beginning of the level we can avoid a minute long cutscene by launching past the cutscene trigger. Normally Indy has to climb on top of this house and the climbing animation will put Indy right into the trigger for the cutscene. Using a launch, we can either launch to the top of the house or even further past it, making it so we never have to climb up and trigger the cutscene, saving more than a minute. This is however not the end of our launching journeys. No, in fact we are just getting started. The next type of launch requires us to get into yet another glitched state. At one point during our indie speedrunning endeavors, a Quest 64 runner called Bing Chang was streaming and a friend of mine called Ben42 told us that Bing Chang mentioned a glitch he had found in Infernal Machine. He found that by jumping into a slope and mashing the jump button as Indy slid to the bottom, Indy's walking animation would become glitched, so it kind of looks like he's walking backwards when he walks forward. This walk is called sunwalk, as opposed to moonwalking. At first this glitch seemed like it wouldn't have any real uses, but Blue Screen was able to find some extraordinary uses for this glitch. It turns out that if you perform a hover high enough while in sunwalk state, Indy will launch forward when he stands up. So the idea is that if Indy has sunwalk state and tries to stand up but there's actually no ground under him, he will instead start launching. Since he is not in a slanted position like the slope launch, this launch will make Indy launch more downwards than upwards. In the Canyonlands, the only thing separating the start of the level from the end of the level is this slope. And we can use the sunwalk state to get right from the start of the level to the end of the level. To do this you would get sunwalk by jumping into one of the slopes in the beginning. Then you could crouch and go up against another slope to start a hover. If you stood up after reaching enough height, Indy would launch forwards into the slope and bounce towards the finish. We then improved on this by managing to do this without hovering at all. With this new method we can again get sunwalk like before, but instead of hovering we climb up the corner of this latch in such a way that when Indy finishes his climbing animation there is no ground under him and he will start launching. After that, you have to precisely turn Indy around in the air and make him bump into one of the slopes so he bounces towards the finish. With this new strat it only takes 10 seconds from the first input to reaching the end trigger. Here is the first level from the first input to the end cutscene. This next glitch is again a strange one and frankly, I don't have any idea about the inner workings on this glitch. If Indy crouches in a slanted position up against a wall and stands up but starts crouching again before the standing up animation is finished, sometimes it can have the extraordinary effect that Indy will be in a hover and all collision everywhere simply disappears. That's right. Simply by standing up and crouching again in the correct spots can make all collision unload. This glitch is used in a few places in the run and they all seem to have their own quirks. Some are very easy to perform simply by having roughly the correct angle while standing up, while others seem to require multiple frame perfect crouches and a perfect angle as well. 
One example of this can be seen in the old treasures route for the level Teotihuacan. In one corridor it's possible to start crouching on level ground, but wedge Indy into a slope so that he becomes slanted. Then we need to perform multiple frame perfect R presses and releases while crouching. This unloads everything and from there we can hover out of bounds. After a short hover we can stand up and drop down to a different corridor below skipping a bunch of puzzles. Now, we still have one more launch type to go, and I have saved the best for the last. This is by far the most powerful speedrunning tech we currently have in the game. You see, the main reason I wanted to explain the previous glitch, the slanted crouch unload, was because it can also be used to achieve something called a rocket launch. After unloading all collision by using the slanted crouch unload, Indy is in a slanted position and if you stand up and hold forward, Indy will launch. And remember, after doing the slanted crouch unload, there is no collision. Indy can essentially launch at insane speeds, anywhere he wants, with nothing in his way, and it is glorious. This is truly the final form of speedrunning, near infinite speed and no collision. What more could you ask for? Near infinite speed and no collision. The true final form of speedrunning. And that's precisely what we have on our hands with the rocket launch. But there is still one problem. If there is no collision, how can we land anywhere after the launch? Well. There are two methods we can use to manage that. The first method is to use the whip. In Nub's Tomb we can reach an eligible slope very early on in the level and from there we perform a slanted crouch unload to proceed to hover. After that you find the correct angle and stand up to start the launch. Immediately after starting the launch you have a small time frame to equip the whip. And then, if you whip at the correct frame, Indy will stop completely in the air and perform the whip animation. This, for some reason, tricks the game into loading in the collision again, so you can land safely on the ground. If done correctly, you will now be right in the final corridor leading to the end of the level. This level takes around 20 minutes to finish without glitches, but with this glitch, we can finish it in around 30 seconds. Here is the level in its entirety. I cannot understate just how precise this glitch is. During these launches, Indy is traveling very long distances at insane speed. And not only does the whip press need to be frame perfect, but the slightest wrong angle will compound over the long distance you are traveling, so you will end up far off target if you miss the angle. Okay. I mentioned that there are two methods we can use to manage the collision, and the first was the whip. The second is the previously mentioned sunwalk glitched state. While we have the sunwalk state active, we have a lot more control over our launches than without the sunwalk state. Without the sunwalk state, Indy simply stops launching and loses his speed if you stop holding forward on the analog stick. But, with the sunwalk state, 
Indy can stop launching and then resume the launch again if you press forward again. And another added benefit is that every time you stop and start launching again, Indy stops in the air for a brief amount of time. Therefore, by tapping the analog stick forward over and over again, we can manage Indy's falling speed and direction to some extent and aim towards a landing spot. And this gives the game time to load in the collision again. This is used in Volcano, where we go to this wall to activate the Sunwalk state. And after that, we go down to this slope to perform the slanted crouch unload. Following that, we can find our aim using visual cues and then proceed to hover a bit away to set up the launch. When we are in position, we stand up and launch. At the right time, we then let go of the analog stick and let Indy fall slightly to see where we are situated. And then we can tap the analog stick in the direction we want to guide Indy towards the landing spot. If done correctly, we will be right in front of the door which triggers the final cutscene of the level. This is still not easy per se, but this allows us to be somewhat lenient with our angle and we don't have to perform a frame-perfect whip strike. Here is a top-down comparison of the intended route versus the route using the rocket launch. The green route shows the intended way, while the blue route shows the rocket launch route. Now, there are still so many minor things I could talk about, but I don't think I will cover those in detail. Feel free to pause the video here to read further about these things if you are interested. These are among others. R warping. Jumping during opening cutscenes. Whip walking through boxes. Latch launches and climbing through floors. There are also many glitched states which have so far proven useless. These are among others Invisible Indy, Sunken Indy, Hatless Indy, Sideways Swimming Indy, and Swim in the Air. I believe the future of Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine speedrunning is bright. Although we might have found most of the biggest skips within each level by now, there are definitely many many more to be found by a bigger community of runners and glitch hunters. New tricks, movement optimizations, consistent setups, more knowledge about the glitches is all out there waiting to be discovered. I believe this glitch hunting madness that we experienced in 2021 was merely the beginning of something new. Although this is an obscure game with a small community, I believe that over time we have many new things to look forward to. This video is also only the introduction to this story. The story of how the times were lowered for each level is an entirely different story on its own, but I'll save that for another day. Lastly, I would like to specifically thank Blue Screen, The Kovic, and Nathan is bored for some of the best times I have ever experienced in a speedrunning community. March and May of 2021, when this revolution was at its peak, were some of the most exciting months I have ever experienced as a speedrunner and glitch hunter. So, once again, thanks guys. I have included a link in the description to the current world record, the speedrun.com website, and the speedrun discord if you are interested in running, glitch hunting, or just lurking to see what's going on. And of course, a very special thanks to you, dear viewer, for watching.